so far until today, technology has always meant progress, right? More and more and more and more, easier and easier, faster and faster, if you want, right? This is not the name of the game in a few years' time. So, so my original prediction was 2029. My current prediction is 2026, which basically is the point at which technology is so advanced that the rules of the game change. And most people don't recognize that. 2026 is three years from today. That's imminent. That's is in, in tech, in tech uh, uh, time, that's three hours, right? And we're getting to a point, I think, that's being more and more confirmed today with chat GPT and the likes, that machines are gonna be more intelligent than us. And machines are also gonna be more autonomous than us. And they're going to be more connected than us. And most interestingly, they're going to be more responsible than us. So, so many of the decisions related to information in the world today are not handed over to humans anymore. Right? Everything that you see on Instagram is not dedicated by someone, it's dedicated by a machine. Everything that you see you know, when you search Google is dedicated by a machine, right? And, and so you have to realize that as those autonomous beings, if you want, become more intelligent than us, which, as I say, most predictions were pointing to 2029. I think mo most of us in the computer science world now are saying 2020. Six, I've heard people say 2023, believe it or not, this year. So, so there is a lot of thought that the, the world, that machines will be more intelligent than humans in this year, pushing it a little, but not unlikely with the, with the technology exponential growth, right? 2023, 2026, doesn't matter. Hmm? When that happens, we hit a singularity. And a singularity is a very interesting place to be. No one, any, if anyone tells you I know what's going to happen beyond 2026, I think they're either very arrogant or uninformed, okay? We don't know. A singularity could lead in one of two ways. One way is uh, it could be a dystopian world where the machines completely dis disturb our understanding of the world, okay? Uh, a lot of people, don't, again, don't acknowledge that while we don't really have robots walking the, the, the streets yet, the machine's foothold on knowledge and information is so large that they could completely distract your view of life, okay? Dis disturb, do, disrupt your view of life. Uh, or we will end up in a utopia. And the difference between the two, in, 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 so the topic of my second book, State Scary Smart, was the difference between the two. And the difference between the two is so subtle rarely ever discussed in computer science, rarely ever discuss, discussed by the regulators. And, and the difference between the two is very straightforward. Those machines are learning their intelligence from mimicking us. They are basically us on steroids, okay? When, I'm, when an Instagram recommendation engine tells you what to see, it's not making up the content yet, okay? It's simply saying from the way you browse, from the content that's been posted recently, from the way others browse, I sort of think you're gonna like this, right? If you change the way you browse slightly, or if content providers stop shaking their hips and start to talk about physics, right? And if physics become more popular on Instagram, somehow more of us will see physics, right? Some of us maybe will see accurate physics, and if you know conspiracy theories on politics are the big next thing, you know, most of us will see that, okay? And, and so what will end up happening is that, in my personal view, within a few years' time, there is a moment of truth. And that moment of truth is, have we reflected to the machines that what we want is actually for humans to be happy, okay? If we manage to do that, the machines will just provide you happiness on steroids, really. It will, it will simply stop showing you uh, things that make you feel less or, you know, egocentric influencers that make you think that you're worthless or not enough and so on. And it will start to show you more of, you know, Wahasu kind of content that basically tells you, hey, you're okay. There is a path to happiness and it's very predictable. And, and I think that choice is, as I said, a singularity. We don't know which way we will go. For now, it's likely that we're going to magnify more of humanity's 
challenges, if you want, downfalls. Uh, but it's in, in my perception, when something is more intelligent than us, it will probably match the intelligence of life itself. And, and life itself is a lot more pro-happiness, pro-life, uh, pro-connection, pro all of us rather than each of us against each other. And my perception, I call that the force inevitable in the book. My perception is that we will end up in that place. Eventually, we'll end up in a place where the machines will tell us, hey, little kids, don't be naughty. This is the way to do it. You know, love each other, do it right, and focus on what makes your life better. Eventually, between now and then, how will it go? Singularity. This is what most people understand, don't understand. Life doesn't want to kill the tigers. Only humans want to kill the tigers to protect the tribe. Okay? Life will create more tigers and more gazelles and you know, more grass. The gazelles will eat the grass, they'll poop more, there will be more trees, the, some of the weakest of the gazelles will be eaten, the tigers will you know, be larger in number until they eat too many gazelles and then balance out. And, you know, it's, life is always pro-life. You know, it, it creates out of abundance. Humans' challenge is not intelligence. Humans' challenges are the result of limited intelligence. Okay? Mm. We're, we're so smart to create a machine that takes us from here to Australia to surf, and we're so stupid that this machine burns the planet in the process. Mm. Okay? That's not how, the, how, how AI is going to work at all. AI will simply say, you can either not go to Australia if you're destroying the planet, and I'll give you a virtual reality headset that does that for you. Okay? Or we're going to invent a machine that takes you to Australia, but doesn't really burn the planet in the process. The reason why we're unable to do this is not because we're very smart. The challenges of global uh, you know, climate change and, and uh, geopolitical issues and economic issues is not because of our intelligence. It's because of our limited intelligence. Give us more intelligence, hand that over to machines that are impartial and uninterested in, in scarcity like humans are, and we'll all be in a good place. The, just like the smartest of all of us are so worried about the species being extinct from the planet, machines that are smarter than us will not want humanity to be extinct from the planet. It's not the way abundance works. I think the answer to all of the technology coming up is optimism, believe it or not. Mm. All of the dystopian stories, we might get glimpses of those in the past. But I think the eventual uh, uh, reality is if machines are smart enough, they'll create out of abundance. The force inevitable is we will end up in a utopia. It's just a utopia that is very different than the world we know today. Different economic models, different compensation models, different tax models, different every model, okay? And it's a utopia that has to cross a chasm that might actually be dystopian. And that's really where, where we need to make up our mind. Do, do we teach the machines the right values now and so they, we don't have to suffer during their teenage years, if you want, uh, or do we not? And then we struggle with their teens, but when they're adults, they'll come back and take care of us. Wow, fantastic. Well, Mo, thank you so You're much. So that, was, that was amazing. Thank um, you.